Soul is created by your thinking by Yuji Krishnamurti. Hello everyone, this is Author PB Flower. Welcome to my channel. I'm a published author of a trilogy, All Kal Nan. In today's podcast, I will be reading excerpts from this series and connected to my understanding of Yuji's words. Today's topic is life force. Before we define life force, I want to point out a few things. I believe in universal mind, universal energy, and universal consciousness. Now back to life force. What is life force? It is a concept that I have come up with and included in my series Al Khalnan, and one that I stand by. It is my understanding, my idea, because I did not get the concept of soul. Human population is on the rise since we progressed to postponing death, not increasing life, by the way. There is a difference because as per me, we have gotten good at delaying death. Quality of life is gradually going down with all the progress that we are making in the medical field or otherwise. And that graph is taking a pretty steep plunge. And I mean the graph of quality of life. So to better understand and get a grip of um, life force concept, let us ask a few questions. What drives our body or any so-called living things? Second question, what drives this world? The world as we know, Earth. Third question is, what is the root cause of cosmic and atmospheric phenomenon? And the fourth one, what drives this universe? So the answer is different depending on where or who you get it from. Our body, our physical body, needs energy in scientific terms. So what drives our body is energy then. And as per the Upanishad, energy is one of the eight, uh, eight elements. I have inferred by reading the data available online that these eight elements concise into three, energy, matter, and consciousness. Now let me read an excerpt from my series All Kal Nan to elaborate on my understanding of these elements, the eight elements. So the excerpt um, here, the premise is that Eklavya and Zenith are again in discussion and Eklavya is uh, explained, Zenith, how this creation came about and then that explanation led to showing her how the universe is in balance or self-sustained. It does not require commandeering or a push. It is all cyclical unlike human inventions that need renewal from outside or it is of no use it cannot go on on its own once created because it is not cyclical it is all linear going I don't know nowhere because we ourselves render our creation obsolete and move on to another so Zenith is um, Responding to Eclab's explanation of how this creation came about and she's saying, Wow, so there is an opposite to balance the creation, not to cause disparity. So Eclab says, That is why I say exist with both, else the other does not have any meaning. So Zenith says, But there are five elements, how is that in balance? So Eclab replies, Actually, there are eight, but yes, at energy and matter level, there are five. Soil or solid is balanced with air. Fire with water. Ether is holding the four within the sixth element consciousness. All of this is balanced by none or nothingness. The seventh element. Nothing is opposite of the eighth element, desire. So Zenith says, well, you have to be aware of nothing to appreciate everything, I guess. Hey, uh, elaborate on the other three elements. So Iklava says, well, we already talked about nothingness and desire and consciousness. So 
In this excerpt, Iklavya is summarizing the creation as per the Upanishad. So let me list the eight elements again. Um, the first one is energy or desire. And the second at the matter level is sound, smell, sight, taste, touch. And then consciousness, which is the spiritual plane. And it is all held in the nothingness. Now in the excerpt that I read, I have explained how everything has an opposite to balance. But we as humans create imbalance all over the place as we prefer one over the other. We are never accepting of both. So back to the question, what drives our body? And the answer is energy, right? Desires. And that is why I came up with this life force concept because it makes the most sense when we meet with an accident or are infected with a disease or get brutally attacked. Um, does everyone behave the same when it comes to death or cheating it? No, because our life force decides if it wants to exit our physical body or not. So it's the desire. So this desire is not of the body. It is um, not in any way related to the body. It is a universal concept, a collective energy, if you will. Um, that could be the reason why some people stay in coma or die early if the life force is content or it leaves the body or if it feels this body is not worth wasting the illusionary time dimension on. Uh, it, exi it exits it. Now, the second question was what drives the world? Of course, world has many things, living and non-living. So this world is a collective concept again. But um, then again, it um, it is nothing but desires. And so again, energy, um, so-called living things, um, it is the desire to survive and procreate. For uh, the so-called non-living things, it is the desire to renew the creation, like, you know, with fire, flood, windstorms, snowstorms, etc. These are all to revitalize or restore the world, keep it changing, keep it alive. You know, all these atmospheric phenomena like air pressure, change in temperature, precipitation or wind or, you know, the underground things like um, the moving of the tectonic plates, volcanoes. You know, these are all driven by energy, universal energy, and that energy is always the same. So if one grows exponentially, the other is bound to reduce to maintain the overall balance. So we could then say maybe the rise in human population is not such a bad thing in the overall universal perspective or the climate change for that matter, because overall at the universal level, it doesn't matter because it will be balanced with something else. Well, maybe all of this is not good for us on Earth. But at the universal level, it has no meaning. It doesn't matter. And this reminds me that my uh, main character in this series, All Kalnan, has the ability to free his life force at will. And this is where um, AI or artificial intelligence and native intelligence comes into play because these I have discussed this concept um, also in my series in detail and in um, several of my uh, previous podcasts and how these two exist in us humans it exists in everything but in humans AI dominates our existence existence and this AI guides us towards technology and virtual living whereas the native intelligence guides us towards survival in nature and away from the technology um, and instills healthy fear in us um, and life force is dependent is independent of these two intelligence native or artificial it is independent of it it is associated with the it is not associated with the um, body or mind so it overrides these two when it decides to leave and it so it could leave any point in time it doesn't matter if your body is like fit and you're in perfect health um, it doesn't matter if you are 
laying on the bed, you know, as good as dead, this life force could still hang on to you. <laughs> so you cannot make sense why someone died or why someone is alive because it is the universal balancing of the energy and um, that decision is not ours or of the body or of the mind. Now I also want to point out that I have uh, theorized in my um, next book or my work in progress which is also copyrighted by the US Literary Agency under the title 17. So my theory is that we do not have any memory of birth and death and this life force enters us when we are severed from the maternal bond or or the placenta before that um, whatever we are the fetus or the baby that's birthing is part of the mother's life force and um, I have explained this tug of war between um, artificial intelligence and native intelligence in my next book and also the concept of life force setting in a physical presence which I just said that it is after that bond between the mother and the baby is broken that's when the life force sets in to the body of the child now scientifically I know that um, people believe um, that a baby has a life of its own when it's inside the mother's womb because the heart is beating but you know it's all part of the mother's body the life force is not separate it is the same as the mother's um, now back to uh, the questions that I had asked um, there was this question about what is the root cause of the cosmic phenomenon and driver of this universe now it is another form of energy right because we see all these comets moving on their own um, because of the gravity um, the solar flares the cosmic storms black holes uh, you know there's so many cosmic phenomenons there uh, we all believe that these celestial bodies are suspended and rotating um, around uh, another suspended object but uh, what is holding it together what keeps it moving perhaps the energy again right because the it's all gravitational pull of each other that's what we think but then where is everything that question hasn't been answered which is nothing but the matter elements into picture along with energy because there is a pull associated with everything and that's what's probably holding it together the nothingness so um, this whole energy concept is desire as I explained as an element so whose desire is this right whose desire well it's the creator's desire because creator is what spawned this creation the desire so who is this creator right that's the root question but then again questioning has to stop somewhere that's what Upanishad says too so thank you for listening this is author BB flower Signing off. Until next time. Bye-bye.